Agree to our terms and conditions and tick the box to hear our great offers. Welcome to The Hump. You are watching The Hump. Hello, Jason. Hello, Julius. Hello, Sophia. Hello, Julius. Welcome, Patrick Wivers. Hey, how are you doing? And I am Julius, and I'm not abrupt. <laughs> <laughs> and before we begin, let's check out today's news. The vast majority of technical crew are freelance or casual. What happens when the work stops? Worse still, when you get injured or ill. The Australian Road Crew Association has a benevolent fund that helps crew who face hard times, and that's a growing number, especially as we head into winter. The fund is perilously short of cash, and you can donate tax-free via Support Act. I've just put the uh, address on the screen now, and we would encourage you to join many others, including ourselves, by donating some funds to help ours in need. Now, does anyone want to know if we've got new gear? Absolutely. I do. We always I do. do. And we always do. And this week I'm having a look at the Package S3-24P. It's a network switch built for AV. Now, that's something that's been letting the adoption of AVB down uh, over the last couple of years is network switches that are actually enabled to do AVB. So, uh, yes, the uh, S324P is a layer 3 switch designed just for us people in AV. It's got rear facing ports. Uh, it comes equipped with dynamic route, uh, routing protocols for greater isolation and control and making it ideal for enterprise networks. You can enable multicast from the GUI and uh, it offers superior streaming over complex networks which is necessary for running things like uh, video over IP. Uh, it's got a power budget of 370 watts if you're minding your green P's and Q's and it has 24 power over Ethernet ports which is always useful. Now, Pat, AVB, um, it was that wonderful free thing that everybody was going to put on everything. We're not really seeing it taken up as mm -hmm. much which is something I was bringing up across the land over Antec. Are you using any Thing with AVB on it? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, more Dante then? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Dante seems to be. Uh, yeah, I thought, thought, you know, with all the car manufacturers coming on, bo on board, that AVB was going to take over the world. But mm. uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's this kind of stuff that's been letting it down. Mm. So the fact you need the special switch, which has generally yeah. been a very, very small list up to this point. Mm. So, yeah. All right, on my radar this week is this road case, because where has it been all my life? I think that's one of the best ideas I've ever seen. Where mm, has it definitely. been? I, know. Well, yeah, what? I mean, we've had road cases and gear for a long time. Mm. Why hasn't ever, anyone ever built one of those before? Mm. It's, not, it's not ready. It's not ready. Those doors will biff in as soon as you put it in the truck and whack something into it. So you're worried about the bit where it yeah, latches no, on no, that no, front? the face of the console will get smashed. Oh, but how do we know? There could be some, some structural stuff. Behind. I mean, it's pretty solid. I mean, it's got the, the You latches. can do it better. You can do it yeah. way better. You need an aluminium channel in the bottom, drop the thing in, latch it on. I definitely want to see it and give it a kick. And yeah. yeah. Mm. We, like, we like yeah. kicking it. It mm. might be a little, it kind of struck me that with all that weight and where it's distributed, it might be a little unstable. Like, and very interesting, I'd like to see what it looks like when you actually put the console up mm. because you're sitting on that narrow wheelbase. And yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, where, one, is, you know, are you going to tip that way? Are you going to... Whether it needs weights mm. in the bottom. But for the first of what I've seen of, of this kind, yeah, it's, it it's great. I think it can only go forward from here. Mm.
Metallica being from the Bay Area, especially myself, like to hook up with people who are local. Needing a smaller wedge for travel reasons, still keeping the same sonics of the giant Metallica sound was a challenge, but not for Meyer, it seems. Very pleased with uh, you know, the duties of guitar and vocals uh, coming through the same wedges, needing to have clarity in both, and this is, this is what happens with Meyer, so. Today on CX Academy, we address the difficult concept of measuring brightness in LED fixtures. There's a few different approaches, so we're going to go through them. Now, first is candle power, which seems pretty straightforward, but it's widely misunderstood. Candle power actually measures how long the piece of string that holds up the net will take to burn through before it falls on our unwary hero, trapping him in the evil clutches of Dr. Colossus. Slightly more familiar to most is lumens, which measures how much longer your order will take to arrive if you ask the chef not to include any ingredient that didn't give its express permission to be turned into an omelette. Controversially, Lux measures whether or not your fixture secretly hates children, but hides the fact out of the fear of dying alone. Now, it's useful to use a combination of all three to determine whether a fixture is right for your application, but none of them are a replacement for good old-fashioned common sense and brightness, which is, of course, the technical term that LDs use to determine if a given fixture makes their bum look big. CX Academy, where we illuminate the unlit for dim bulbs. Welcome back to The Hump. We're talking about gear obsolescence and responsible electronic recycling. Mm. Well, what the product cycles are getting very short now. You're yeah. reaching the point, Pat, in your rental fleet where you'll mm -hmm. have stuff that you simply can't sell mm -hmm. and then you've got to dump it. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? I don't know. We hold on to it. It just yeah. sits there. Yeah, I think a lot of people are doing that. There's a lot of stuff like, say, I mean, a great example is old RF gear that you can't operate mm. legally in that frequency anymore. A lot of people will have just got it sitting in, mm. in the warehouse because mm. they haven't figured out what to do with it. Mm. This is um, funny. I go to a lot of production companies and I, I do see a lot of top base store. Mm. I see, and you guys are the same. Mm. You've got stuff We've that got Vic had stuff. 20 years ago. Yeah. He doesn't like throwing it out. Mm, he doesn't <laughs> throw it out. <laughs> when he goes away, we throw it out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem is the throwing out. There's, there's like particularly battery technology. Yeah. There can be mercury. There can be a whole host of really nasty things that we don't want to see in mm. landfill. And that's, it doesn't matter what kind of tech it is, whether it's lighting, audio comms or whatever. Mm. Uh, and I mean, I don't know where to take that kind of stuff. I mean, no. I think local councils do domestic stuff, but uh, mm. you know, where, where does it go? So there's well, no we're... companies that, that will take this back after well, they you sell are, it. But I don't think it's quite, I don't think they're widely known. Mm. I think that's the problem. We were talking mm. at Roadshow about LED life cycles of 10 years. Nobody's going to reach 10 years mm. because the product cycles are moving so fast now that you're going to replace it to get more efficiency, mm. to get better light, mm. to get quieter units. Mm. You know, just because a component has 10 year life expectancy doesn't mean the whole unit's going to last that long. Mm. What happens to the power supply? The power supply probably won't last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe someone does know out there. Oh, I'm sure they do. I mean, like, you can get on a Planet Arc and mm -hmm. a place like that and, and you know, you can, you can look up whether there are electronics recycling companies that yep. will strip down stuff. And, and often there's like gold and circuit boards, so mm. it's actually worth their while to do. The young people are annoying. We just used to burn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's what happened to your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how environmentally friendly that no, is. Maybe we that. could pay to figure this out. <laughs> it, or, yeah, but if yeah. you do know, let us know. <laughs> but um, maybe don't burn. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right, now, speaking of old gear, going from old gear, let's go and have a look at some new gear and gearbox. Jason, it's so dark in here today. What, it is, what it would is. I do if I was trying to operate the equipment in this <laughs> rack here? Well, we'd need some kind of light, Jimmy. Oh, you mean like this? Oh, look at that. Yes, yeah. this is... A lovely little device. It is. You're sitting there wondering how the hell can you review a bloody rack light. Well, we can. We're doing it right now. Mm. We're reviewing this one because it works. Yes, it's the RAD M23 from Pen Elcom. And, and, you know, where would we be without Pen Elcom, frankly? Well, <laughs> none of our road cases would shut. Nothing would work. <laughs> it would just, uh, it would all fall apart. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. See ya.